a multi-Grammy winning artist who has sold more than 50 million albums worldwide, she's been described as the voice of a generation. Now, Sheryl Crow is front and center in a new documentary, Sheryl, now available to rent on iTunes, which sees the All I Wanna Do and Every Day is a Winding Road singer-songwriter open up up about the trials and tribulations of her sometimes tumultuous career and private life. Stuff to Watch has had the opportunity to take a look at director Amy Scott's 2018's similarly entertaining and enlightening Hell, which focused on the eclectic Hollywood director Hal Ashby, absorbing and sometimes shocking confessional and picked out our favorite revelations from the many contained within the film's just over 90-minute running time. McDonald's gave Crow her first big break. Struggling to make ends meet as a school music teacher in Kennett. Missouri in the late 1980s, Crow says her first brush with fame was when she was tapped to sing a jingle, essentially old MacDonald had a farm in a variety of voices, for a certain fast food restaurant empire. I made more in 45 minutes of work for McDonald's, 42,000 US dollars, than I did in two years of teaching, she laments. It led to more commercials, and eventually her decision to try her luck in Los Angeles. She starred on an episode of Cop Rock. We all remember Stephen Bochco's police procedurals like Hill Street Blues and NYPD Blue, but who can recall his short-lived 1990 crime-solving musical series Cop Rock? Crow does, because she starred as an undercover policewoman in the 11th and last episode ever made of the critical and commercial disaster. I did a dance routine and a song, I think it might have already been cancelled. She of the story which involved an investigation into multiple reports of college's students being sexually assaulted and raped by an unknown assailant, which inspires the unfortunately titled Crow song number I Got Something For You. Singing on Michael Jackson's Bad Tour was a strange experience. After a successful audition, Crow says she was given a look and fitted for costumes. She remembers being invited to watch 1953 Western Shane and episodes of 1950s sitcom Amos and Andy with Jackson and Bubbles the Chimp. He used a ballpoint pen in the chest to control Bubbles whenever he got out of hand, Crow remembers. Even when I'm telling it, I think this is like the weirdest thing ever. I didn't really get to know him. And I didn't think anything of him having a couple of little boys on the road with him at different times. I was naive. Now it makes me sad for the life he had, and for the children. It's just devastating to even think about. One of the highlights of the tour for her was duetting with Jackson on I Just Can't Stop Loving You, although if performing in a tight mini skirt and a massive wig wasn't bad enough, the choreography was so intimate it inevitably gave rise to outlandish tabloid speculation that they were a couple. What I can do for you was inspired by one particular person. Track 8 on her wildly successful 1993 debut album Tuesday Night Music Club, it detailed Crow's experience with sexual harassment as a result of her Jackson connection. His manager Frank DeLeo also desperately wanted to be hers, guaranteeing that her album and single would come out in the top 10 if she took him on, he told her she had to attend every event with him. That's when the harassment started she says. He was all over me, and it was a constant battle to keep him off me. And, as one of her colleagues recounts in the documentary, Frank was a gangster, he wasn't cast in Goodfellas, as Toddy Cicero, for nothing. Crow says it got so bad she contacted a high-powered music attorney, but was told that if she blew the whistle, she would never work again. You can come out ahead if you just stick it out, she says she was told. There are people who would love to be in your situation. That situation saw Crow sink into depression, the darkest place. One talk show spot that led to an even darker place. As part of her burgeoning popularity after the release of Tuesday Night Music Club, Crow was invited to make her first appearance on the popular The Late Show with David Letterman in 1994. However, after performing Leaving Las Vegas, a nervous affirmation to the host's query as to whether the song was autobiographical caused her a world of pain. Not only did it strain her relationship with the song's author David Berwald, she was also accused of contributing towards the suicide of novelist John O'Brien, 
whose 1990 semi-autobiographical book of the same name, which was adapted into an Oscar-winning movie in 1995, Bearwald had drawn from, with O'Brien's consent. I carried that weight for a long time, Crow concedes, admitting that the resulting media storm and headlines also made her not want to be accessible anymore. She got into a stooge with U.S. retail giants Walmart. After the triple Grammy-winning success of her debut, you would think everyone would have been keen to stalk her 1996 self-titled follow-up. Everyone was, except for the thousands of Walmart stores across the U.S. That's because their head office objected to her one of her songs, Love is a Good Thing, and the line, Watch Our Children Kill Each Other with a Gun They Bought at Walmart Discount Stores. Crow alleges they wanted the song removed or the lyric altered to a different retailer like Kmart or she'd face the prospect on missing out on an awful lot of potential sales, especially in places where Walmart were the only music retailer in town. She, though, was determined to stick to her guns. And then there was Lance. It was a relationship I wanted to give time to. I was ready to get married, I was ready to have a life, Crow says of her high-profile, three-year relationship with record-breaking and later disgraced, cyclist Lance Armstrong. She now admits that having to dim your own light to be in somebody else's wasn't healthy and the win-at-all-costs attitude of the man almost ten years her junior wasn't something she shared. Recalling their engagement in September 2005, Crow says it was a nightmare. We had a giant blow-up and then a five or six-carat diamond showed up a couple of days alter. Sadly that's what I wanted but I didn't want it that way. The pair parted ways just months later. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe to my channel.